Number 66. Suppose hydrogen and oxygen are diffusing through air. A small amount of each is released simultaneously. How much time passes before the hydrogen is one second ahead of the oxygen? And such differences in arrival times are used as analytical tools in gas chromatography. All right. So um, this one seems a little complex, right? What's very important is that we are able to take the words in this statement and be able to create mathematical expressions out of it. So let's first think about what's happening. So let's just say here's a certain line and, you know, H2, right, which is hydrogen gas and O2 will be diffusing through the air medium here. All right. Now, they're both going to travel in this direction. But it appears that hydrogen will travel faster according to the problem, right? And also its D value is larger, so it should travel further in the same amount of time. Now... Both molecules are going to reach, let's just say, this particular line right here eventually. Okay, they're both going to reach this point. Okay, let me draw that a little straighter. They're both going to reach that point. But hydrogen, as it travels, is going to reach this point faster than, let's say, oxygen, right? Okay, so what we can say, but eventually though, so let's say at this particular stage right now, hydrogen, you know, is, oops, hydrogen is now at the point of approaching you know this particular arbitrary location and now oxygen is going to be one second behind hydrogen meaning that if one second now elapses oxygen will now make it to this finish line okay so basically we have two things going on both items are going to travel this particular black length correct let's call that d so what we can say is that the, or actually, excuse me, let's call it X, just because that's X in the formula down here. So let's call that X. So we know that the distance hydrogen will travel will equal the distance oxygen will travel. Okay, that makes sense. Now, what happens though is that hydrogen arrives at this line first, essentially ahead of oxygen by one second, right? In other words, oxygen is delayed, right, when, with respect to hydrogen. So now what we can start doing is we can start thinking of maybe how to frame that as, as an equation relating the time. So we know that the times both of these items uh, meet this particular location are not equal. But what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to say the time H2 takes to travel to this location shall equal somehow the time it takes the time it takes O2, all right, to reach this particular point. But whose time is shorter? Well, hydrogen's time is shorter. Oxygen's time is longer, right? Oxygen's time is longer than hydrogen's time by what amount? By one second, right? Because that's what the problem's asking, ahead of it by one second. So that means that if I take hydrogen's time and I add one to it, I would get oxygen's time that it would take to get to this particular finish point. Now, hopefully that makes sense. So we have these two big ideas, all right? These two equations. Now from here, the rest is easy. The physics is kind of over. Now it's just algebra. So letter A, oh, well, not letter A, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this equation, all right? And now when I say x of h2 equals x of o2, what I'm saying is that the root mean square or the average distance of each are equal. So if these two root mean square distances are equal, then that means that the square root of two times the diffusion coefficient for H2 multiplied by the time H2 takes to get to this particular location will be equal to, all I'm doing here, right, is just taking this and I'm substituting in now this or these variables for it because they're equal and I'm just putting little subscripts there. That's all I'm doing. Now that will equal then the square root of... 2 multiplied by the diffusion constant of O2 times then the time of O2, right? Times the time of O2. This should all make sense. All I'm doing is I'm just, again, just substituting this on in for the equation, all right? For Meaning for X sub O2. All right, now that I have this, now I'm going to try to get to work. So now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to say to myself, well, I have two unknowns here, all right? I'm trying to solve for time, but I have two unknowns. So what they're really asking us is they want to know how much time 
It passes before hydrogen is one second ahead. So really they're asking us to solve for T sub H2, meaning the time it takes hydrogen to get to this location. All right, that's really what they're asking. So what now I'm going to do is substitute this on in for my O2 here because they're equal, right? Okay, so let's do that. So now we're going to get square root of two times DH2 times TH2 will equal square root of two times DO2 times parenthesis now TH2 plus one. That's all under the parenthesis. Now look, I know this, this is a constant. I know this, this is a constant. I know this and I know this obviously, and one's a constant, so I have one variable. This is beautiful, right? Now we can start solving, so let's do it. Let's start solving now, okay? Cancel the square roots because both sides are over the square root, so you can just reduce it. So this is now gonna be two, and let me write it a little bit more to the left. So this is now gonna be two multiplied by the diffusion coefficient of H2 times the time it takes H2 to get to that location will now equal two multiplied by the uh, diffusion coefficient of O2 multiply then by the time it takes hydrogen to get to that point plus one. Notice the twos are also in common, so I can cancel them, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is then distribute this to both terms on the right-hand side. So now I have the diffusion constant of H2 times the time it takes H2 to get to that location will equal then the diffusion coefficient of O2 times the time it takes hydrogen to get to that location plus now the diffusion coefficient of O2. Simply now subtract this on over to the left-hand side so I can combine like terms, right? So now if I do that, if I subtract now DO2, TH2, subtract DO2 times TH2, remember this is your variable and these are known numbers, all right? So we can reorganize this. Essentially these two terms, oops, essentially these two terms have a common factor, right, of the TH2. So now this can read D sub H2, meaning the diffusion constant of H2 minus the diffusion constant of O2 times time of H2 that it takes to get to that location will equal then the diffusion coefficient of O2. Now look, how do you solve for T sub H2? All you have to do is divide out this constant now, right? That's all you have to do. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to do that in this particular space over here. So let me just move my fancy little Picasso on up there. All right, and now we're left with this, that T, the time it takes hydrogen to get to its location will be equal to the diffusion coefficient of oxygen divided then by the diffusion coefficient of hydrogen minus the diffusion coefficient of O2. And now here it is, guys, this is all we need. Now we can solve. So this is the time it takes hydrogen to get to that location will be the diffusion coefficient of oxygen. They're both in air, so that's fine. So there's 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. Divided then by the diffusion coefficient of hydrogen. 6.4 times 10 to the minus five, minus then the diffusion coefficient of oxygen, 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. Voila, take out that calculator, jump up and down, because we got the answer. So let's do it. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus five, divided then by 6.4 times 10 to the minus five, minus 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. And what do we get? 0.39. 0 0.39, and that's in terms of seconds. So, as soon as the clock starts ticking now, right, as soon as that clock starts ticking, about four tenths of a second later, hydrogen will be here, and oxygen will be roughly here, about one second behind hydrogen, or AKA hydrogen will be one second ahead of oxygen. All right? Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We would appreciate it so very much. Uh, we thank you also for viewing, and we do hope that we are uh, providing some guidance and uh, that you find these video lectures helpful. Thank you very much.